In this video, we're going to follow up the generalized inverse for a symmetric matrix. Uh, the, in the video preceding this, we just looked at a generalized inverse for any matrix. And we're here we're going to deal with symmetric. And so the background videos uh, that I'd recommend you watch before this is the video uh, that I put out called Generalized Inverse Matrix. And the second one is the Spectral Decomposition or Eigen Decomposition. And as a reminder, in this video, Generalized Inverse Matrix, the condition for a Generalized Inverse Matrix is this, that it has to be A, A dash, A equal A. And then A, then, then this is called a Generalized Inverse of A. Okay, So for Theorem 1, for a symmetric matrix A, there exists a Generalized Inverse of A. So by the spectral decomposition theorem, we can decompose A into P prime DP, where P is an ortho, where P is orthonormal and D is a diagonal matrix. If we let the inverse matrix equal this P prime D inverse P, where uh, D inverse is a diagonal matrix. But the, the elements are the reciprocals of these diagonal elements. Now, if it's zero, of course, you can't take the reciprocal, so we'll just set it equal to zero. Otherwise, we take the reciprocal. And now we must show that this condition holds with this generalized inverse matrix. So let's look at that. So A, A, in, uh, generalized inverse A. So the, uh, because of the spectral decomposition, we can break A into this, which is P prime DP. And then this is the generalized inverse matrix. And then this is A. But since P are orthonormal, this is I, the identity matrix. And this is the identity matrix. So then we're left with this. But D, D inverse is the identity matrix. So then we're left with this. But this is what we were calling A. So it does satisfy the property for generalized inverse. So one exists for an, a symmetric matrix. Now the, oh, theorem two, uh, for a symmetric matrix A, there exists a generalized inverse such that this property holds. Now notice that this isn't quite, this, this is the property for a generalized inverse, and this is the only property required. But, it, we, but here we're proposing that if it's a symmetric matrix, that this property also holds, and the generalized inverse is symmetric. Okay, now this property is called uh, reflexive. So if, if this condition is met, then the generalized inverse is reflexive also. So, from theorem one, we're going to let the generalized inverse be this matrix here. So now clearly, uh, x dash is symmetric. So if we take the transpose of the generalized inverse, and then we then we put, plug in what the generalized inverse is, and then we distribute the uh, transpose. So this p becomes p transpose. This is a diagonal matrix, so it's symmetric. And then this P prime, prime is just P. Well, this is what we were calling um, A inverse. So the matrix is equal to the transpose of itself, so therefore it's symmetric. So now let's uh, prove the reflexive property. So here is uh, the first step, and then we just plug in what each of those are. There's the generalized inverse, there's A, and there's the generalized inverse. So similarly, that's the identity matrix, that's the identity matrix, and then we're down to this. But D inverse D is the identity matrix, or, yeah, is the identity matrix. Which then we get this, but this is what we were calling the A, uh, in A dash, or the uh, generalized inverse. So this property does hold. 
Now theorem three, in the last theorem, if we have two generalized inverses, A1 and A2, you know, dash, if they're generalized inverses of this X prime X, where X is an N by K matrix, then the following two properties holds. This is equal to this, which is just X, and then these two quantities are equal. And the, this property is going to really play a part in the next video that I do. So proof. Let's let V be an uh, N by 1 vector. And then V can be broken up into two components, V1 and V2, where V1 is in the column space of X, and V2 is in the orthogonal complement to the column space of X. Now, since V1 is in the column space of X, we can write it as a linear combination of the columns. Now, let's look at this quantity, V prime, this. But V can be broken up into, you know, it's V1 plus V2. Now we take this quantity times each of those, and we get this. But notice here that V2 prime, so that's a, it's now a row vector being multiplied by x, but since v2 is in the col the orthogonal complement to the column space of x, this is zero. So we're only left with this piece here. But v1 was, you know, we were letting it x be, and since it's a prime, then we, it distributes like this. But a1 dash is a generalized inverse matrix for x prime x. So this, based upon the uh, condition of a generalized inverse matrix, is just x prime x. But this piece, b prime x prime, is v1 prime. And then, now we can add 0 to this and it doesn't change it, right? v2 prime x is 0 because v2 is an orthogonal complement space of, of x. And then we can factor out an x and we're left with v. And now since v is arbitrary, the result follows that this is equal to x. So that was the first condition. And now in the interest of space on my paper, this could be repeated with uh, a2 dash, you know, the, the second generalized inverse, and it all will equal x. So both of them equal x, which means they all three equal. Now for property two, we we have this a uh, a one dash x prime v. So let it be this. So we're we're just we're multiplying this by an arbitrary vector v. But v can be broken up into two components v one and v two, and then we then we distribute this to both of those. But notice that V2 is in the orthogonal complement of the column space of X, so this is zero. So we're left with this. And uh, V1, since it's in the column space of X, can be written as XB. But according to the first property, this here is equal to this, so X a2 dash, you know, x prime xb, and then we, xb is v1, and now we can add 0 to this quantity, and it doesn't change it, since, because this is 0, so that's 0, and then we can factor out the x, x, a2 dash, x prime v, but since v was arbitrary, the result follows, that this quantity is equal to this quantity. All right. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you, you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.